When I started out with my wine education, I wanted to start at the absolute beginning. And for me, that meant doing the Wine and Spirit Education Trust Award in Wines at level one. So today, I'm gonna to take you through a guide to that particular course so that you get an understanding if you're looking to gain a WSET qualification, what you need to be able to do to deliver. Coming up. Hello and welcome to the Grape Explorer where we celebrate the world of wine. On this channel we do wine education, product reviews and lots of tastings. So if you're interested in wine, consider subscribing. Now WSCT Level 1 introduces you to wine at a pretty basic level. Uh, it's a day course with a 30 question exam at the end and you are expected to get a pass rate of more than 70%. The course itself goes through some of the basic around basic styles of wine, service and storage of wine, as well as a really useful section on matching food and wine together. So like I say, one of the first things that the course does is it wants you to get a really great insight into understanding the different styles of wine. And that may be that you would go through some light wines, perhaps some fortified wines, certainly sparkling wines. And within that, you're gonna be looking at some of the very basics like the colour of the wine, is it a white wine or a red wine? Has it come from a cool or warm climate? Is it a dry wine or a sweet wine? As well as some of the other things as well, you may start to comment on things like were there tannins in the wine? Is there acidity in the wine? And was there perhaps some use of oak in the wine? Now the principal grape varieties that are covered on the course during the day are things like Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc and Riesling for white and Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Syrah, Shiraz and Pinot Noir for red. You may also look at some other styles of wine. I know that when I did my course, I looked at Pinot Grigio as well. Uh, we did a Malbec on my day. And then, like I say, we did some sparkling wine and some fortified wine as well. We had some port and we had some Prosecco. So the approach to tasting wine at level one is a much simpler version of what comes later on under levels two, three and the diploma. We're gonna talk about the color of the wine. Is it red, is it white, is it rosé? We're gonna talk about the condition. Is it clean or unclean on the nose? We might look at the sweetness. Is it dry, medium or sweet? We might also look at the body. Is it light body, full bodied? And then we're gonna talk about some of the flavor characteristics that we get on the wine. So do we get any fruit flavors? Are there any spicy notes? Are there any floral notes to the wine? We might even take a look at whether there are some secondary aromas. Are we getting any oak on the wine? And like I say, we might look for some other things as well, so we may comment on whether the wine is particularly acidic or particularly tannic. During the course of the day, there are a minimum of six wines served. Um, I believe actually we had a little bit more than that on the course that I was on. I, I think I recall doing about five in the morning, five in the afternoon, so that was really good ahead of the exam. And then we're gonna go and move on to the service and storage of wine. So what's the appropriate temperature, for example, to serve a white wine? How would you store a red wine? as well as some of the procedures for correctly opening still and sparkling wines. You know, sparkling wine has a very specific procedure that a lot of care needs to be taken in, by comparison to a still wine, and that's covered off on the course as well. And finally, you may go through some of the common faults that you uh, can identify with a wine. And I have done another video on wine faults, so if you're looking to learn a little bit more about wine faults, you'll be able to find that video on my channel. And then for me, where the day was particularly intense in terms of complexity was around food and wine pairing. So we're gonna be taking a look at what effect does eating something sweet have on a wine, something particularly bitter or acidic, perhaps something savory, as well as things like chili heat, you know, what's that gonna to do to a wine? And so what we did was we went through some examples, we had some food laid out on the table for us, and we basically did a bit of a comparison. So what was this cheese gonna to do to this white wine? If I ate something savory, what was it gonna to do to a different type of wine? Really useful um, session uh, as part of the day. And actually what they gave me on the day was a really handy, uh, wallet sized guide to food and wine pairing which I use to this day. Which led us into our exam. Now like I say this was a 30 question exam, it's all multiple choice and to give you some of the examples um, of questions you might get in level one it would be things like which of the following wines would you recommend to a customer who's looking for a white wine and your answers are things like Chardonnay, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot and Syrah. 
And of course, to someone who's particularly experienced in why that might seem easy, but after a day's course, there's a lot of education going on, there's a lot to take in over the day, and so it's just nice to recall back to what you've remembered during the day. So yes, some of the questions may seem uh, a little bit straightforward. There are other ones that for me, I found particularly tricky. Uh, another type of question might be, what style of wine is a Chablis? Is it a dry red, a sweet red, a dry white, or a sweet white? So again, some of these questions may seem quite basic. There were a number of questions on food and wine pairing, which I, I do think are more challenging during the course. Um, but overall, you know, for a day course, you do get quite a lot of information provided to you. You are put to the test at the end of the day. But I do think it's a very good grounding in wine. Um, and having already understood a little bit about wine prior to taking the course, I'm glad I started at level one um, because it did give me that basic to think, okay, if I'm going to move to the next level, what can I expect? You know, what, what do I already need to know going into the next level? So WSET level one, uh, a really good grounding uh, in your wine education. And if it is something you're looking to do, I would highly recommend it. But there we go, that's WSET level one. If anyone's taking the course right now or thinking about taking the course, let me know in the comments section below. I'm the Grape Explorer. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers.